Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the short guide for Halls of Infusion, one of the dungeons that we're going to be playing in M Plus during Season 4 of Dragonflight. We're going to go through the main trash and boss mechanics and keep in mind that the footage that you see is from the PTR, so it is subject to change, but it's probably going to be pretty close to what goes live on the servers. At the start you're going to be fighting trash with different combinations of several mobs, one of them is the Wrath the Defender. Make sure to interrupt their demoralizing shout as it reduces the whole damage that the whole group does. And definitely stay behind them as they have a frontal that applies a nasty bleed. The containment apparatuses are these orbs that are going to channel a beam to your target which you cannot interrupt but you can stun. Their target is random and later on you're going to be fighting few of those at the same time and if they target the same person they can take a lot of damage so be prepared to heal and use defensives. And make sure to save an interrupt for their expose cast which does heavy AoE damage to the whole party so you should prioritize interrupting that over the demoralizing shouts. You should also constantly watch your feet as the Gale Monsters are going to jump and do AoE damage in an area so simply dodge that. After you go through several packs of different sizes containing different combination of these mobs you are at the first boss watcher Iridius. He starts at 30% health and he has a frontal called Titanic Fist so stay behind him. He's also constantly going to do a channel called Static Surge which does heavy AoE damage to your whole party. So healers be ready with a cooldown for those 6 second windows. His next ability is called Power Overload, he's going to mark 2 people with debuffs sticking dots. That they have to run away from the party as when they expire they drop these circles on the ground that do damage so you don't want them on top of your team. And keep in mind that you can dispel these dots but you should be careful doing so because if you dispel them on top of the boss the puddles are also going to drop there. The boss also casts Spark Volley which are just these blue swirlies on the ground that you have to avoid. At 15% the boss transitions to phase 2 and 4 orbs are going to spawn around him. He is immune to damage and he's going to get a stacking damage increase buff, the only way to stop it is to dispel him by killing the orbs on top of him. Once they die they explode so move out of this area which is going to negate the shield that he has but they're also going to do an interruptible cast that you can stun so keep an eye for that as well. After that you go back to phase 1 but now the boss is doing even more damage because of the debuff depending on how many applications he managed to get and... Once he casts power overload and puts the debuffs on the people, once they expire the circles that they leave on the ground are even larger radius now so you have to run them further away from the group. Keep in mind that one of the nice changes right now is that once you drop the circle it starts small and it expands which means that you can outrun it and not take much damage from it which was not the case in the previous iteration of this dungeon. Once you kill the boss you have a choice of where to go left and right but you're going to see basically the same trash mob in just different combinations. The shock troopers are going to try to cast elemental focus which is going to make their primary attack smacking your tank an AoE so make sure to interrupt that and only heal your tank instead of the whole party. And they usually have some zeal lots around them, invisible mobs that are going to stun the initial target so make sure to let your tank run in first. You're also going to encounter small frogs called Curious Loglets. They fixate a random target and once they hit it they apply Stacking Poison debuff. Which not only you have to heal through but if it reaches 10 applications you instantly die. So make sure to CC and slow them down and especially if you don't have a poison dispel and keep in mind that you're going to see those same little friends on the next boss. You're also going to see the Dazzling Dragonflights which have Dazzle, a frontal cast that not only does damage but it disorients as well so make sure to interrupt that. Just before the second boss you're going to fight two mini bosses, the first one is called Flamecore Amy, make sure to interrupt as many of the blasts that she cast as you can. But always make sure to save an interrupt for its cauterized cast which is a huge heal that you must interrupt. She's also going to root one of the players putting a debuff on them that the healer can dispel. And they should because shortly after she does Molten Crush this big fiery circle on the ground that you need to dodge. At the same time the other mini boss is going to jump around, do AoE in an area and call small adds to help it. But nothing is scary there, just AoE the adds and keep dodging it. The second boss is the Gulping Goliath, a huge frog that is going to do overpowering coke, a huge roar that not only does AoE damage, 
but it also puts swirlies on the ground that you have to dodge, which transform into the curious sloglets that we saw earlier. Try to keep them close to the boss, not only because you want to AoE them down, but then he's also going to cast Gulp. Huge circle on the ground that is going to kill all the frogs inside it, but your tank also needs to soak it. If they don't, the boss enrages and that's obviously very bad. The soak puts 3 applications of that same poison debuff from the sloglets on your tank, so keep an eye for that, dispel it if you need to, and keep in mind that other players in your group can also get some of the debuffs before the little froglets die. The boss is also going to target a player with a belly slam, just move out of the blast area unless you want to get annihilated. And the last ability is called Toxic Effluvia, which is a 4 second channel doing heavy AoE damage to everybody in your group. The boss is going to keep juggling between all of these abilities until you eventually kill it. The trash that follows includes big proto dragons which are going to cast deep chill. It does every damage to the whole party and leaves a dot on everyone, however it also slows you down so if you have abilities like blessing of freedoms you can remove it. Make sure to take advantage of those especially on fortified weeks and then dodge oceanic breath which is a big frontal that the dragon casts. The dragons are going to have several different types of mobs around them. The gale singers are going to thunder strike this big circle around you that does AoE damage. It's not interruptible but you can CC and stun it. The ice colors have a heal that you have to interrupt. And the earth shakers cast this big brown circle around them which does AoE damage and stuns so make sure to avoid it. Few packs of these and you're at the third boss Kai Jin. She has an aura that is constantly going to inflict damage to your party so your healer must be healing at all times. And her first ability is called Frost Cyclone which is a frontal targeted at a random player. Be very aware of your position because not only you have to dodge it but if it aims at one of the pillars around the room it's going to explode do heavy AoE damage and potentially kill you. So make sure to always bait that to an open area away from the pillars. After that she's going to follow up with a Hailstorm which is a 7 second cast which ends with a big explosion AoE damage. You can avoid that but just hiding behind one of the pillars. However be very careful not to hide behind one of the cracked pillars as they're not going to protect you but instead they're going to explode and do damage in an area designated now by a blue circle. So make sure to hide behind a healthy pillar which is not in one of the blast radiuses. After the hailstorm is over and hopefully you survive, the boss is going to perform her last ability which is called Glacial Surge. Circles are going to spawn around the boss and do damage in an area slowly expanding so make sure to move out of those and collapse back on top of the boss to bait the next frontal which is going to follow shortly after and the fight is going to continue going through the sequence of abilities until you kill the boss. What follows is a gauntlet in this narrow corridor with waves coming from the left and the right side. Keep an eye on those because they do a lot of damage and knock you back. In the gauntlet itself you're going to see some of the mobs that you encountered so far in the dungeon including the proto dragons, ice colors, earth shakers etc. And small aqua ragers are going to keep coming until you complete the gauntlet reaching the far end. These mobs will try to enrage by interruptible cast but the more important cast to interrupt is Tidal Divergence. If that goes off the mob splits into several different smaller mobs which can easily overwhelm you so make sure you interrupt these. To finish the gauntlet you have to fight a mini boss in the end which is going to cast Inundate that does heavy AoE damage especially on fortified weeks so make sure you do not underestimate this mob. She's also going to cast Flash Flood, big circle on the ground, make sure you're not standing inside and make sure to interrupt the Aquas Barrier cast which puts an Absorb Shield on the boss which will make it die slower. That will bring you to the last boss, this big Elemental which is going to cast Tempest Fury, heavy AoE damage to the whole party and he's going to follow it up with Infused Globals, he spawns circles on the ground that you need to dodge shortly after they become orbs and the orbs are going to move slightly around, make sure you don't get hit by those. He's also going to cast Squaw Buffet, knocking the tank back and following it up with Focus the Luch, which is just a tank buster, make sure you heal through that if your tank is not using their defensives. Once you reach 60% you get into phase 2 which sends you back into the gauntlet, there's no mobs right now there but you need to run back dodging the orbs and the waves that are going to be coming at you to stop them from spawning. Keep in mind that you can use the little pillars to hide from the waves 
and make sure you also dodge them because not only you take damage but you also get knocked back if you get hit. Back to the middle you're going to see 4 adds that are channeling on the boss who is immune right now and they're empowering him slowly. So you want to interrupt them as quickly as possible but keep in mind that once you interrupt them they start casting the inundate AoE. It's not interruptible, you can stun or CC it though, however if you interrupt all 4 adds at the same time you can easily get overwhelmed. However you can use CC as Hex, Polymorph, Paralyze etc on the adds that are casting to stop them from casting and then kill them one by one. Once you finish them off the boss emerges and the fight continues the same way as in phase 1. That will be all for this Holes of Infusion guide for Mythic Plus in Season 4. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for guides to the other dungeons or separate boss guides for each of the fights. I'll see you in the next video, thanks for watching and I'll get out of here.